Hey everyone, so I do not like Shadow of the Earth Tree. I wanted to start with that and set the expectations for this video because despite the fact that I've put a ton of hours into this massive DLC for Elden Ring, I have to say the overall experience that I came away with is not a positive one. You guys know that I am a massive Souls fan, so if anybody should have enjoyed this DLC, it should have been me. I mean, this is the biggest DLC package for a Souls game by far, just like how Elden Ring is the biggest Souls game in general. However, while I do have my individual opinion on each of the games in the franchise, I think none of them are perfect and each of them have flaws and things that I don't like. One thing I can say is that all of the games are fun. Unfortunately, the emotion I felt while playing Shadow of the Earth Tree was not fun, and this is probably the first piece of From content that I've had this feeling with. Frustration would be more akin to what I was feeling while I was playing this DLC. I do genuinely think that we are at a point where From is taking the series in the wrong direction. I think they are focusing way too much on almost a meme-like difficulty and are going for the marketing idea of the fact that this series should be hard and going for streamer rage clips rather than delivering meaningful difficulty within their games. And Shadow of the Earth Tree is the prime example of this. And to be fair, there has been quite a bit of blowback to Shadow of the Earth Tree, more than I expected really. People are critical of this DLC all over the place, not just on Steam where, to be fair, the PC version did suffer from serious technical issues. People are frustrated with the bosses, are frustrated with the difficulty, and the series is starting to lose people, I feel like. Shadow of the Earth Tree feels like the first step in a different direction, in a direction that doesn't necessarily appeal to me. and. I did want to kind of expand on this and talk about my overall feelings on this DLC and the frustrations I had with it. But before we do get into that, I do want to touch on the good as well, because this DLC does have a lot of good in it. In fact, all of the good and the positives it delivers make it extra frustrating that there are so many issues I personally have with it, because the world still looks great. I still really love the environmental design. In fact, I would probably say I like the environmental design of The Land of Shadows more than the main game. The legacy dungeons continue to be fantastic design-wise, still proving that From are masters at designing uh, good intricate dungeons. The verticality of the whole area I think is a lot more well implemented. I think that's one of the things that was really missing in the base game. Sure you had the underground areas and the mountain top, but those areas felt very disconnected from the main game. The verticality here is much better implemented. I honestly don't mind the emptiness of the world. I know this is a common complaint that gets brought up all the time, but listen, Shadows of the Colossus is one of my favorite open world games and it is a classic for a reason. You can have a great open world that is empty if you know how to design it. And I feel like the Land of Shadows does nail that. I do just enjoy riding around, even if I am skipping the enemies or even if I'm in an area that doesn't have anything going on. I still really love the enemies and bosses from a visual design standpoint. They all look really distinct and really just fantastic. The design of bosses like Mesmer and the Shadow Tree Avatar are still on point, proving that From can still design really distinct and creative looking enemies. I like the new weapons and the new weapon classes as well as the new utilities. This is I think actually something that is probably the best improvement in this DLC. I love that From is now okay with giving you ranged options, that you now have weapons like the perfume bottle, which are a little bit more creative than, you know, like 25 different versions of a long sword with different skins and slightly different stat scalings. These are the type of weapons that will be needed for the future. Weapons with better combos, more interesting movesets, better usability, and you know, honestly, I would rather have fewer weapons in each weapon category, but have more overall categories. With that though, all of the positives unfortunately don't compare to everything else I dislike about this DLC. And unfortunately, the biggest thing I dislike is the combat and the combat design. If we go back to Elden Ring, you guys know that I've made like two or three reviews on the game, 
And you probably know that I have my issues with the game, especially after the mountaintops. It really felt like back in the main game too, that after the mountaintops, the focus was on creating frustration for the player instead of having meaningful difficulty and challenging areas. Shadow of the Earth Tree feels like the souped up version of that entire section and design philosophy. Difficulty encompasses all in Shadow of the Earth Tree. It really is like to use the lore accurate comparison like the frenzied flame. The difficulty is just an all consuming thing that burns everything in its path. Pushing aside the most important thing which is intent in my opinion. Everything is expressly designed with the purpose of killing you and frustrating you as much as possible and to be as insanely hard as possible with no regard for whether that type of difficulty makes sense for that boss and that enemy. To give you an example of what I mean when I say that difficulty needs design intent, in previous Souls games you had an enemy like a big armored knight. You would expect that enemy to be slow, but you would also expect them to hit like a truck and have a ton of poise, HP and armor. Makes sense, they are a giant knight with a huge sword, a shield and giant armor. If you have an enemy that's like, you know, he's like one of those nimble goblin type things in Dark Souls 3 in the swamp area. If you have like some weird goblin in a loincloth, you'd expect them to be fast and flail around, but you would also expect them to have low defenses and low poise. Both could still be difficult in their own right, for different reasons, but there would need to be a consistent logic behind their difficulty. The little goblin is fast, that's why he's difficult, the armored knight has poise and hits like a truck. Their moves and their difficulty has to make sense in their design context. When I say that this is lacking in Shadow of the Earth Tree and difficulty encompasses all, is because in this game, both the nimble goblin and the armored knight can catch up to you near instantly, have 8 to 9 hit delayed flailing combos that deal one third of your HP with each hit, and also have insane HP and poise. This is what I mean when I say that the intent here is to frustrate and to be difficult, not to provide meaningful challenge. The DLC is full of examples like this. That weird like Capra Demon Omen type enemy with the dual chakram, you'd expect that type of flipping flailing enemy to have low defense and low poise. They have insane defense, insane HP and a lot of poise. They flail around, Rolana the boss flails around, the Mesmer Knights flail around even though they have like great spears and great swords as their weapons. It doesn't matter what enemy you fight, everybody is going to do the same thing because the only intent is for them to be as hard as nails. In fact, with this, Shadow of the Earth Tree has more enemies and bosses than I can remember in any other game that combine the worst traits of From enemy design, which are in my opinion, one, the endless flailing combos with variable timings, which I already kind of touched on, to the unnatural delayed attacks which started to show up around Dark Souls 3 but really became a problem with Elden Ring. Here they are everywhere to an insane unnatural degree. 3. Barely any recovery time. No matter the boss size, this is something that really frustrates me, that a human sized enemy like Rolana, okay I can get behind the fact that they are fast. But Maetir, which is a giant like weird finger enemy, also attacks insanely fast and has barely any recovery between their attacks. 4. The ridiculous tracking and bad hitboxes. Seriously, the hitbox you had on the golden hippo's grab attack was inexcusable. That one was fixed but you still have issues like the... what's his name? Gaius. Gaius's charged attack has a ridiculous hitbox. And you cannot convince me that that hitbox is fair and makes sense. The other thing, the ridiculous tracking. Listen, I remember in the Dark Souls 2 days when everybody was bitching about Dark Souls 2 and the fact that you had ridiculous 180 spins with enemy attacks. Here, it's back and it's stronger than ever. Where enemies literally do complete 180s in the air just to catch you if you mess up your roll timing. It's unnatural. I hated it in Dark Souls 2 and if we didn't excuse it for Dark Souls 2, we shouldn't be excusing it now. And number 5, something that I think really deserves its own section, the terrible camera. 
What we end up with as a result of these traits is that bosses and enemies feel more homogenized than ever before. Despite their strong distinct visual designs, everybody sort of ends up feeling the same. I mean, to use the previous example, Maytir hits like a truck and attacks non-stop and is very fast. Mesmer hits like a truck and attacks non-stop and is very fast, despite the fact that they are completely different enemies with completely different design intent. It, it, this is especially frustrating because you, like I mentioned, have strong visual design in this game, but none of that matters because everybody kind of ends up doing the same thing. The reason I believe that this is present in Shadow of the Earth Tree is I think the engine limitations as well as sort of the gameplay trapping of Elden Ring means that From have genuinely run out of ways to increase the difficulty without resorting to these type of tricks. I've already touched on this back when I was making my reviews. When I played the main game and got to Melania, this was the first thought I had. Like, I looked at Melania and what she does and I thought, where do you go from here to increase the difficulty? And, and as soon as I heard uh, Miyazaki and From talk about how Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to be more difficult than even Melania, I was worried because the very trappings of Elden Ring's gameplay means that there are limited ways to increase difficulty beyond what someone like Melania can do. And this trapping and this limitation can be seen all over with the bosses in Shadow of the Earth Tree. Which means that for the first time ever, we have truly unavoidable attacks by conventional means in a From game. This is something that is, in my opinion, unprecedented. Waterfowl Dance was already pushing it because you really are exploiting the boss AI to avoid Waterfowl, but now we have Maytir and that stupid laser it does, which can I think only be avoided by Raptor of the Mists. As far as I know, it is not possible to conventionally dodge that attack. And of course the more infamous one, Promised Consort Radan's Double Slash, which is truly an unavoidable move. Even with a frame perfect dodge, you cannot actually dodge it. This, I think, completely breaks away from tough but fair. Having an unavoidable attack where you need some, like, obscure item or specific skill that you have to use, even if you don't want to use, to avoid taking damage, completely breaks from the overall design philosophy of Dark Souls as a whole. In the rest of the series, this was a core design philosophy that all boss attacks should be avoidable by conventional means no matter what armor and equipment you use if you are rolling normally at least. Veering into this territory is dangerous because there is no stopping from here. Like people are going to be demanding more and more difficult enemies and more and more difficult bosses. How do you achieve that? Like What's going to stop FromSoft from creating a gimmick boss fight where your dodge randomly doesn't work 33% of the time? It's going to be difficult, it's going to be killing a lot of people, but when are we getting to a point where we're, we are losing fun versus difficulty? And you also have of course the natural engine limitations, things that have been issues for years with From games, but as things are getting faster, more frantic, and more particle effecty, it's getting more and more noticeable, which are mainly the fact that the camera is worse than ever. I truly think that Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree is inexcusable when it comes to the camera. From is a triple A developer at this point. Elden Ring is one of the most successful games in the past couple of years. Shadows of the Earth Tree is probably selling millions. Everybody is playing this DLC. You at this point cannot have a terrible camera, it is inexcusable. And simply put, the camera cannot handle this type of boss design. I mean look at bosses like the Dancing Lion, it just flails around all over the place, it's difficult to lock onto, the camera cannot keep up, if you go unlocked it's really difficult to maintain your view. This, the Shadow Tree avatar is the exact same way, you're locking onto its head and it's just going to get confused, the camera gets completely messed up and it's really difficult to actually keep track of what's going on with the boss. The moves are too flashy and the camera is simply not up to par to deal with it. It gets stuck, it cannot keep track, it slows you down and no, before you want to argue, no, this is not a part of the difficulty. So many people like to argue that the terrible camera is part of this series and it enhances the difficulty. I say that's bullshit. 
Terrible mechanics should not be excused even in a difficult game because it does not add to the difficulty. The movement system is starting to be an issue too. People have always consistently pointed out that Elden Ring feels like you are playing Dark Souls 1 with your character while the enemies are playing Sekiro. This is more true here in Shadow of the Earth Tree than ever. Some of the bosses would be okay if we had Bloodborne level movement, but we don't. We have Dark Souls 1 level movement, the heals are slower in Elden Ring than in Dark Souls 3, and the bosses are flashier and crazier than ever. What I'm trying to say by this is that we need some more tools within the combat system. Give us more defensive options, give us more meaningful defensive options, more ways to dodge and avoid attacks. I think Lies of P, which is actually a game that I'm also playing and I'm having way more fun with, is really the evolution of the Souls combat system. Lies of P feels like the definitive way forward for these types of games. And the fact that you have multiple options to deal with combat, you can block, you can perfect parry, you can dodge, that type of level of freedom is something that is sorely missing, where in Elden Ring it feels like you're just flipping around or you are hiding behind a great shield and poking. It almost feels like Elden Ring doesn't want to give you these tools because then that would reduce the difficulty and we cannot have that. And finally, the last point I want to make is that a lot of the issues I'm experiencing with is that a lot of issues I personally have with modern From titles and especially Shadow of the Earth Tree does stem quite a bit from the Souls community itself. A lot of these negative developments are because of the community, we can't even deny that. The git gooders, that I like to call them, are not just ruining the subreddits and the YouTube comment sections, but I do genuinely believe they are affecting the game itself. People see difficulty as a bragging right, to an unhealthy degree. Just look up how many threads there are, for example, on any of the Elden Ring subreddits, and how many comments there are where people are like, well actually I found Consort Radon to be incredibly easy, or I found this boss to be incredibly easy, or I beat this boss on the second try. People are wearing beating this game like a badge of honor. And From is absolutely catering to this crowd. The crowd who do not care about the quality of the game as long as it's hard and they can brag about beating bosses. These people do not care about the bad camera, frame rate issues, any of the myriads of problems with the quest design, it's just make it hard, just make it hard and make it even harder. Bonus points if we can get some streamers to rage about the game as well while they're playing. In this way, the community has almost become a flanderized parody of itself. I mean, Radon's second phase already basically feels like one of those fan-made joke mods that I always hated, the ones that just throw extra projectiles and AoE effects and particle effects on a boss for added difficulty. The circle at this point has finally closed where From are doing the exact same things. The other issue is that the community at this point has basically locked itself out of any attempts to meaningfully discuss whether the difficulty of this series still makes sense and is still fair. If you bring up the difficulty topic, you are immediately going to get shouted down by a bunch of people screaming, get good, get better, you need to learn, actually I beat the boss, level 1, no problem, so shut up. People are unwilling to talk about the difficulty and like I said, cannot assess it because immediately there will be comments and some people just do not want to bring that on themselves. This is something we need to talk about. We cannot have a consistently increasing difficulty level in this series without any meaningful improvements with the overall combat design and the movement system. So yes, to some of my thoughts, I do not like Shadow of the Earth Tree. I truly don't know what the future of the Soul series is going to be like. If it continues this way, I'm gonna be honest with you, I won't be sticking around. If the games continue to just be catering to the lowest common denominator fans, where you basically have to play the game with the most meta build or be an insanely skilled player who can put in like 6-7 hours a day practicing in the game, if it's going to be those two player categories and no one else, I am not interested. From are a great studio. They can still bring meaningful games. Armored Core 6 is one of my favorite releases recently by them. I truly love playing Armored Core 6 anytime and it's a fantastic experience. They can still bring it. 
but they are now a AAA developer, like I said, and they could be a victim of their own success. Dark Souls and the Soul series in general cannot get trapped in this marketing loop that they are the hard game, because that is a dead end. I truly do hope that From either goes in a completely new direction for their next game, or I do hope that they take a serious look at the games and think of something different. Give me new combat, new types of difficulties, anything that is detached from Souls and the Elden Ring baggage that has emerged. Just as Dark Souls 1 was able to redefine genres, I do hope that the next game From comes out with Dust 2. If they continue in this direction though, well, there's always the old games in the series to keep me occupied.